Welcome to Asheville. The three of us have made it to Asheville, North Carolina, which is a city that we've never been to before. And so to do things a little bit different, we are going to explore the city by walking on the urban walking trail. This trail is just a little under two miles if you end up doing the whole thing. It just takes you all around downtown Asheville. There's 30 different points of interest, which tell you a little bit more about the city. Some are like cool art sculptures. Riley's never really spent much time in a downtown city area. She's very excited right now, so we're gonna see how this goes. She might stop and get something to eat. Apparently a lot of the restaurants here are pretty pet friendly. We're gonna be following an interactive map that we found online, so we'll link that in the description below. So next time you guys come to Asheville, you can do this walk as well. And we're actually starting out right in front of the Asheville Art Museum. This is where stop number one is, so here we go. The urban trail is divided into five distinct eras, each of which has a symbol carved into pink granite blocks placed in the sidewalk along the way. In front of each of the 30 stations is a brass plaque inscribed with a short paragraph explaining each point of interest. You can also follow along with a free audio guide available online to get a longer, more detailed explanation. This was such a fun way to explore a brand new city. We came here because it is dog friendly. Right, just laying down here, enjoying the shade. Thankfully, it's pretty empty right now, um, but it's a huge place. We're in the shaded area. It's like fire pits and cornhole and darts. But we wanted to try some barbecue while we're in North Carolina, so we got a three meat platter. Um, so it came with Texas sausage pulled pork and then these we got because they're kind of famous here they're called moink balls i believe is how you say it and it's essentially like a bacon wrapped meatball um and then you got two sides with this so we got mac and cheese and beans and then we are going to try all of the sauces that we had we're going to start with the texas sausage i'm going to try it first without dipping them into anything just to see Looks really good. It has, um, I think it's got some kind of cheese, little flecks in it. But it's also not too spicy, but it does have a little bit of heat to it as well. All right, let's go with the pulled pork next. Mm. 
That's delicious. Really just like melts in your mouth. So I'm gonna try to eat this little ball here gracefully. But I'm sure. Thing off. Tastes like a bacon wrapped meatball. It's very, um, I think the bacon is like very peppery. So it has some good flavor. It's really good. So I'm going to try the sides and the sauces to see what we think about them. So first we'll start with the barbecue baked beans. My mouth is literally watering. It's really good. It's got a good tang to it. There's big chunks of pork mixed in there as well. Like look at that. That's a piece of sausage just sitting out in the beans. It's really good. It's got some kick to it, but nothing too bad. Alright, mac and cheese, a local favorite. what mac and cheese is supposed to be. I don't remember the name of this pasta, but it's like absolutely one of my favorite types of pasta for mac and cheese. Cavatappi? Maybe. That's impressive. I'm not that's sure it. if that's how you say it, but... Hmm. Color me impressed. Let's we'll start with our sauces here. North Carolina cold. Very vinegary. Pickly, almost. Good. Almost more like a Dijon mustard, I think, than a barbecue sauce. All right, Kansas City is next. Very smoky, super flavorful. As people who have eaten at Arthur Bryant's in Kansas City a couple of times, that tastes like Kansas City to me. Then we have the Texas pepper. Tastes like Texas, yeehaw. <laughs> but super peppery, very sweet as well. Sriracha barbecue. I think that's, yeah, I think that's what. Super forward with the heat, as one would expect from a sriracha, but a really, really good flavor. The next one is the grizzly ghost pepper. A couple years ago, Candace and I did the one chip challenge with ghost peppers, and we still haven't recovered, so let's, uh, let's give a little taste to this one. Immediate firestorm in my mouth. Yep. I'm having flashbacks to the packy chip. <clears throat> All right, what do you think, babe? All right, well, I think we're going to put the camera down and actually eat. Yep. So Maybe we'll, beans will have a little, I little treat. Beans will find something on this tray, she'll eat. To get to our Airbnb, it requires driving up a pretty steep gravel access road. The host recommends all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive vehicles to access his property. Welcome to our Zen retreat just outside of Asheville, North Carolina. Let's go in and take a look inside. So when you first come into the RV, they've got a nice little coffee bar set up over here um, with a fancy ninja coffee pot, which Andrew has loved using in the mornings. And then you enter into your full-size kitchen. So you've got your microwave, your stovetop, an oven, and I would say about an apartment size fridge and freezer. There's also plenty of pantry space on the side for all of the food you're bringing along with you. And then if you come over here, they've got a very nice little dining area table set up with some bench seats on both sides. And as you can see above it, there's a giant TV. And then to watch the very large TV, you can swing over here and sit in one of the two very comfy leather recliner seats. It's a bit of a little like theater setup. And then in the middle of the RV, you enter into the very nice size bathroom. Um, you've got a little sink over here, composting toilet, and then a full size shower as well with a very nice skylight. And last but not least is the bedroom area in the back of the RV. So they've got a very nice queen size bed, which is super comfy. There's also tons of storage in this room. So there's like hooks all over the place to hang stuff. 
there's tables and closets on either side of the bed, which is very nice. All right, now we're gonna head outside because they've got a lot of cool setups out there and Andrew's gonna show you all of that. As soon as you walk out to the porch, there's a nice patio area to welcome you to enjoy your outside. Not only is it a patio, it's actually a covered patio. So no matter the weather, you are covered because it's actually a covered patio. Yeah. Um, there's also two super comfy places to sit, as well as a table in between. And there's also a giant fan. It's been a little bit warm in the afternoon, so this has been helping out a lot, keeping us nice and cool. And while you're seated over here, you get to enjoy your beautiful woods view of woods and leaves and trees and spiders and snakes and squirrels and pumas and so there's not much of a view but it's super peaceful and quiet and tranquil you've got this beautiful table made out of slab wood with some nice stools candace and i enjoyed our breakfast there this morning they also have a very nice propane grill so that way you can do all your outside barbecue and not have to worry about the charcoal and then way over the corner is Riley's favorite spot of this outdoor oasis. This is Riley's Playpen, also known as her pee, -pee zone. <laughs> They've included this really nice mulched area um, that is specifically for Riley. There's a solar light, so even at night she can come out here and do her business. And as long as one of us cleans up, none of us will get in trouble. And to finish up the tour, I did want to mention that you can actually close that gate. So as soon as you come in here, you swing that behind you and the entire area is completely enclosed for Riley so when it's time for her to go out there's no leash there's no harness just open the door and let her do her business so that is going to wrap up the tour of the cozy zen camper that we've been staying at for the rest of the day Candace is going to work and I'm going to start editing the video tomorrow we are going to go check out chimney rock which is a very popular hiking trail in the area it's supposed to have a gorgeous viewpoint at the top of like 500 stairs, I think it was. Um, we're also going to check out this pretty flowering bridge is what it's called. Um, kind of like a little mini arboretum. And then we are also going to the Biltmore tomorrow, but I don't believe you can film there. So I guess you won't be seeing that. Yeah, so we'll be there, but you guys <laughs> won't be there. Uh, if you've never heard of the Biltmore, it is a giant mansion on the south side of Asheville, and Candace said that there is an 8,000 acre garden. We're going to see every acre. Every acre. She actually mentioned that when you booked your tickets, that it said as soon as you drive onto the property, it takes like 45 minutes further driving to get to the house while you're on the property. So that's pretty crazy. So that is going to do it for us today, so we will see y'all tomorrow. Good morning. We just checked out of the camper and drove about half an hour to the Lake Lure Flowering Bridge. Um, it looks like there's a bridge and there's some flowers and just like Candace said earlier, it looks like a little mini arboretum. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're just supposed to wander around and like enjoy the, the solitude of the flowers next to the highway and listen to cars as they drive by, but yeah, this is really cute. Mm -hmm. We're going to wander around, see what they have to offer, and see if Riley gets lost in the lilies. There's a sun in the sky, there's a cloud drifting by, all kinds of birds make you wish you could fly, and in the distance I see someone waving at me. Lake Lore Flower Bridge, which was pretty cool. 
Um, we plan to go to Chimney Rock State Park and do the quick little hike to the viewpoint there because it's five minutes down the road from the Flower Bridge. But unfortunately it cost $17 per person I think, so 35 bucks for both of us. Um, to do one hike. Yeah, which I mean it would be worth it if you were like going to be there for consecutive days doing lots of hikes. but. We literally were gonna do like a half mile hike, so we didn't really feel like paying $35 to do that, nor did we have time to do multiple hikes. So we decided to forego Chimney Rock. Um, maybe we'll do it if we, if we come back to the area. So that's actually gonna wrap it up for our time in North Carolina. We just had this one stay while we were in the area. Um, like we mentioned yesterday, for the rest of the day today, or most of the day today, we are going to be exploring the Biltmore House and Gardens. Riley's so excited she's shaking. I don't know if that's picking up on the camera, but she's literally shaking. Um, so the gardens are dog friendly, so she's allowed in the gardens. The house is not dog friendly. So our plan is, I'm, I know, I'm just going to send Candace in so she can explore. If I'm able to go in later, I will, but um, that's kind of our plan for today is just to enjoy the gardens and send, send Candace into the house for at least a little bit. But apparently the gardens are actually the coolest part of the whole thing. So that's going to wrap up our time in Asheville, North Carolina. We hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the cool attractions here. And we are about to hit the road again and head somewhere new. But we're not going to tell you where yet. So as always, we'll, we'll see y'all somewhere. Pretty different little viewpoints or stopping. Points of interest. Yeah. Oven and a full size. Full size. Yeah. Nope. Oh, yep. Hang on. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, you can mug it. Well, the good news is that's on camera. <laughs> Thanks for watching Riley Roams. Please subscribe to our channel to keep up with all of our travels. Don't forget to hit that like button and leave us a comment below about your favorite part of this video.